Is the Bujinkan Saki test real? Now stop, stop there Bujinkan nutters. Before you go mad and press dislike and before you start ranting, watch the video because you'll be quite surprised I'm pretty much pro Saki test but I've got some issues to debate about it. But of course this, the issue of Saki test goes around many, many times and I wanted to do a video to set what should be done and what you should be talking about when it comes to the Saki test. Now, so do I, Anthony Cummings, believe or disbelieve in the Saki test? I'll give you my honest opinion. I'm totally on the fence with probably one foot hanging over the believe section. Uh, simply because I do think that humans can perceive threat. Uh, I, I do believe that is possible. So, well, I'll go into that in a minute. Right, first of all, as far as I am concerned, the first... Saki test to come into history or the first recording of a Saki test was actually in the film Seven Samurai. Now if you remember in the film Seven Samurai, this is in 1954, in the film The Seven Samurai um, they're trying to recruit samurai and they're sat behind the door, I think it's Seven Samurai, I'm sure it is, it's years since I've seen it. But uh, the master's sat there and he says, come in Samurai-san, come in. So the samurai is about to come in and he goes, whoa. There's somebody waiting behind the door with a sword ready to cut down. So you're like, so he goes, oh no. And the next one walks in, he's like, Tsh, and blocks it, you know, from that test. And the third one, the numpty guy, he walks in and gets battered on the head, doesn't he, with a wooden sword. Now that is the first time I've ever seen the Saki test recorded in history. Now, um, I think it predates any reference by Takamatsu or by the Bujinkan. So Bujinkan chaps, uh, well you want to try and find a reference before 1954. Remember it has to be physically there before 1954, i.e. a magazine article, a video, an interview, anything that predates 1954 that is connected to Takamatsu will show you that he didn't get it from Seven Samurai. So, the next step is research. Oh, I've been searching, not long guys, only spent about 10 or 15 minutes, but I've been searching for an article I once saw. It came up in a Yahoo news thread, and I can't find it again, and I'm really sorry about this, but it was research. Some, I think it was a university, I think it was proper university research, had filmed um, Olympic martial arts specialists, and they'd slow mode the film down. So what happened was, is you saw, and, and their results were that as somebody would go to defend before the person actually moved to attack. So they said top level Olympic uh, martial art practitioners had this precognitive uh, understanding of when people were going to attack. They didn't know how, they just have noticed it by a millifraction of a second. But I can't find that research guys, so can someone please find that research? I'm sure it was to do with Olympic martial artists and I'm sure it was done at university. Could you please put the links here below or email me and I'll put it in the links below. So uh, I do believe, like, you know, of course I've not seen the statistics, I've not seen the research, but for me it doesn't seem implausible that the human can, you know, can understand that threat is coming to it from it, not just its eyes. You know what I mean? I, I believe, uh, you know, uh, and I believe, don't know, and by that I mean I don't have the facts, I don't know why, but the brain is such a complicated machine and it's evolved from an animal state and we have so many natural animal reactions left within us that I do believe this idea that you can sense danger is there, but I don't have any scientific backup for that, which is the problem because nobody has any scientific backup for this, which is what we're trying to find. So, um, I think the theory of the air pressure thing is absolute bogus. Somebody feels air pressure and they move out of the way. No, totally disagree. I disagree simply because I would like someone to go and find what is the reaction time and what is the sensitivity. I'm talking proper scientific research. The sensitivity on the back of the neck for air pressure from a sword versus time of reaction on that. I'm like, like, absolutely no. Air pressure, out the window. Don't, don't agree. So what the Bujinkan should do, I think, what the Bujinkan should do is they should get 50 people who claim they can pass the Saki test. Get them all to the Hombu Dojo, they have passed the Saki test. The reason I'm saying this is because I don't believe everyone who's got their fifth dan can actually pass the Saki test. I think most of it was coincidental, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but what you want to do is get 50 people who say they can pass the Saki test, and all day Hatsumi Sensei should be like, bang, 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 and dwindle that down to five people who pass it nine out of ten times. A minimum of nine out of ten times, if not ten out of ten times. 
Uh, that is so we do not, that is for a control basically. These people are proven to pass it. They did it a hundred, you, you know, you do it a hundred times on that person and you windle it down to five people. Now you know those five people pass it and you should do it over days. They pass it, they pass it, they pass it without anything, just blindfold, they pass it. Five people which are proven, I hope I'm getting my point across here, five people who continually, continually prove that they can pass the psyche test. Then, set them up with earplugs, set them up with blindfolds and put a sheet behind them, a very thin sheet to get rid of this air pressure theory, I, I hate that theory. And what you want to do then is have Hatsumi Sensei perform the psyche test 100 times being filmed with that one person in front of them, then 100 times with the second person, 100 times with the third person, 100 times with the fourth, 100 times with the fifth. Now you have five different controls here, different people who have passed it 100 times in a continuous non-edited video, yeah? So you edit your one take for one, one take for the other, one take for them, or do it all together. And it doesn't have to be just Hatsumi Sensei, you can swap over um, with absolutely, and with the sword above, and there's no halfway, and it doesn't go up then down, or just down, it literally is the same strike every time, same strike every time, until, you know, you get the results. And of course, if the, out of 500 goals, if the people are passing it 90% of the time, 80% of the time, you can prove it's real, you know what I mean? You can do that. So it's all within the Bujikan's power, they just have to get off their bums and do it. Um, so, I have never seen a physical Saki test in any ninja scores, but I will tell you chaps, I have found the Saki test, if you will, or the Saki in ninja literature. Now, what I mean by this, I've not found, you know, if somebody attacks you from behind, you can dodge. But in some shinobi manuals, it does say if you get a feeling of utter dread, something's wrong. So it's not the Saki test, but it's very similar, and it's in shinobi literature. So it's literally, you're in your house, and something is not right. You're like... Mm. And even in Naturyu, it says uh, there are people, if you are mega trained uh, as tacticians, uh, you sort of get the gist of what's going to happen before it happens. And it says only the top or the best people at this get this. It doesn't now be careful. In Naturyu, it doesn't say this precognitive, it doesn't say that. But because the next sentence in the first, it's in the first scroll as well, guys, you'll get it when a book comes out. It says, um, uh, People who don't have this skill have to rely on their observation and everything. But some people just have the knack of knowing when something's going to go wrong. So it's there. And of course in Shinobi history you get dread. Or like there's the, the classic one where your pulse is out of sync. There's dread coming. So there is a few things in Shinobi manuals. The Natori one was not in Shinobi by the way. That was in the tactician manuals. Um, right, so... What I want to do, guys, is the next thing is I want to ask some people out there to do some research on the idea of feeling dread. Are there any papers out there on the humans or animals, you know, within our evolutionary chain, which has gone on to human, that show that uh, we have the ability to sense dread or to sense something that is wrong or to sense danger what are the scientific ticking boxes in our mind that sense danger somebody needs to go through these with with more time than i've got the problem i've got with hatsumi sensei when he does it is the fact that it's done from different times sometimes he reaches up and down sometimes he goes straight down sometimes you know it's never continuous it's always a little bit and, and what I, I was in the dojo for one year and I watched quite a few Saki tests and what I found was really bad was like Hatsumi would go look at people, did he pass, did he pass? You shouldn't ask if this passed, he either passed or he didn't, but some people were like this and you know, he'd like, and he'd come here and he'd be like, and people would like, pass, and some people say no, then they'd have a debate and you're like, no, you either pass or you don't pass and you don't change it, you just do it. So uh, I would say that a little bit of the problem lies with Hatsumi Sensei not making this a regulated and very much more stricter. I remember my Shidoshi Stephen Powell when he did, he did in 95 I think back in the day, he said it was extremely strict, they brought the sword right down to the floor and they didn't stop it here and there was a fail, you straight away if you fail, bang, gone. And apparently it seems to have eased off that. Um, so, for the Bujikan people out there who are very much anti-me, you know, I do actually sit on the fence of possible. I think it's possible. 
and I do think the budget can, can prove it's real if they just put some organisation together and got together and did it and did what I said. Then they'd have an excellent video, they could produce it very well and you'd be able to, and all slow mo, all slow motion to show. So get your budget cam people, get the best cameras you can out there, get them filmed and show the person moving before as the sword moves. You can dispel this air pressure myth, you can get rid of all that. You just need a slow mo camera, you need five people who can pass it nine out of ten times every time they do that, not just fluke, make sure they do it and you can get it all sorted. So that's me. Uh, just before I go, I want to remind you guys that, remember, Real Ninjitsu, you want Egan Koga by Chikamatsu, Real Ninja and Real Koga stuff. Book of the Ninja, of course, Bansen Shukai doesn't need an introduction, Real Ninjitsu. Don't forget our old Hattori Hanzo. I read the fourth chapter the other day of uh, Nimpiden and I forgot how good it was. In fact, I'm going through it again, marking down the places and it's mint. And for non-ninja things, but samurai things, we've got samurai war stories. So don't forget them. Books are still there, and uh, we're still doing research on them and all that. Right, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope you enjoyed the Saki testness. Leave your comments down below, and please try and stay away from, like, you know, just random pseudo-scientific arguments. Actually go and find some information for it, and we should make a bit of a leap forward. All right, guys, thank you very much. I'll see you soon. My name's Anthony Cummins. Bye-bye.